بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome everyone to the SMLE Overview Seminar Please can, can, can you confirm that you can hear me on the chat يا اهلا وسهلا حياكم الله جميعا. اوكي بيفور وي ستارت ليتس سي ان ذا تشات. كان يو تيل اس فروم ويتش هير ار يو؟ اي نو اتس ا ساتردي نايت اند ام شور ذات يو ار فيري انرجيتيك سو كان يو شير وذ اس؟ وي هاف 5 يير ستودنتس Nice. We have one fourth year, fourth year, third year. Very nice. Okay. Welcome for you all. Uh, my name is Mohammed Ahmed Sharbat. I am a teaching assistant and research fellow in Salman Raja University. And today I'm honored to welcome you all in the SMLE overview seminar. Uh, today we, my team and I, uh, are happy to welcome you to, the, in this, to this seminar, and are be, be, where we are very eager to share with you our experiences, overview uh, regarding the SMLE, one of the major milestones in our medical career. We have some of the best presenters and top students uh, that the university have witnessed. Yes, I think we have the top uh, results in the female section in the history of SMLE. We have the top result in the male section in the history of SMLE. I think also we have the top uh, for in regards to GBA in the history maybe of the university. So we have, we brought you the best of the best. And we are very excited to start uh, this journey. Our session will be a small session to give uh, just a small an overview. And uh, hopefully we are hoping that this can be a series of sessions in the future, inshallah, and maybe a future course. So by the end of this session, inshallah, we will send you the survey and, tell you, and ask you about your opinion, uh, the evaluation, and also for the attendance. And you can tell us about uh, what you want more, uh, what if you want uh, future sessions, how it, how it can be, and what exactly do you want, so we can help you with the best we can. Okay, so are we, you ready to start the session? For the majority, I will use the English language because I know that for fifth year we have a lot of non Arabic speakers, but also. Here, now and then, how will you look at Arabia because it's more friendly and easier to use? طيب. If everyone is okay with that, I cannot see anything in the meeting, uh, in the meeting chat. I'm seeing one, two responses only. This session is for you guys, so let it, let it be interactive. And in the end, we have the QA section. If you can see in the Zoom, there is the chat button and there is the Q&A button. And for the Q&A button, throughout the session, for any question that you have, you can write it there. And by the end of the session, uh, the whole team will answer the different questions for you. Okay? Please confirm for me if you can see the question and answer button. And tell me if you are ready that uh, we can start. Or if you want to grab some coffee, and not ready to start, we can also do that. The SMLE overview seminar. And in today's seminar, we will have five main outlines. The introduction, we will give you an overview about what is SMLE, then an uh, how to so you can prepare as a student for the SMLE, going to the exam and some tips for the exam day. Then we will 
have our speakers to get their experiences, 90% plus experiences, and you can have your question and answer in the end of the in the end of the seminar. So throughout the seminar, for any part, if you had have, have a question, just write it in the Q and A but, uh, section. Inshallah, hopefully by the end we will answer it for you. Okay. So let's start by defining what is the SMLE. So uh, the SMLE is the Saudi Medical Licensure Exam. So it is basically an exam which tests your readiness to practice the uh, the medical field and to practice uh, or go to for postgraduate training. It's mainly uh, clinically oriented, so the content of fourth year, fifth year, and uh, uh, in mid school. Okay. The layout of the exam is consisted of uh, consisting of two hundred to two hundred twenty questions MCQs. This is an update which happened last year in uh, May uh, or March, sorry. And uh, it was previously 300 questions, but then they reduced it to 200 to, uh, from 200 to 220. Uh, and it's basically, uh, this amount of question is similar to the questions that we take in the progress test. So it's not uh, very demanding for us. It's uh, four hours long, two hours for each uh, 100 MCQs, uh, or 210, uh, and, and you have in between 45 minutes break, and the exam is fully computerized. So you will go to an exam center uh, in the specific city that you will choose, Jeddah, Riyadh, Hail, uh, Dammam, whatever city which is closer to you, and you are doing your internship there, and you can take the exam in that city uh, by any center. For whom? Who can take that exam? Internship students and fifth year. Any one of them can apply for, uh, ask the train, uh, he can ask the training department for a request that he want or she wants to do the exam and they can give them the permission and afterward he or she can apply uh, for the exam. When, what is the time of the examination? So this is the schedule of 2024 examination times. And you, it's similar to other years, but basically you can see that there are many periods. And they will open the registrations for some period, then they will close it. So almost in every month, you have an exam period that, can, yeah, that you can take the exam in. And uh, my colleagues also will tell you that it's preferably always to take for any period, to take it in the end of that period, okay? So it's open throughout the year. And, but what is the, uh, the exam about? What is the content of that, of that exam? Uh, so you can see that it is mostly the clinical rotations, medicine, obigani, pediatric, and surgery. This is taken from the Saudi Medical uh, uh, Commission, uh, and they for their the their blueprint for the examination, and uh, it is like a few years older and it wasn't updated. So sometimes these percentage differs, and they tell you that it might increase five up to five percent or decrease for each category. But we can see is that the predominantly it's about medicine, thirty percent, obigyni and pediatric both take twenty five percent and surgery take 20%. Some will ask like, how about orthopedics, psychiatry? Don't we, will, aren't we getting, getting any questions about them? No, of course you will get questions about orthopedic, about psychiatry, about ethics, but they divide it into these major divisions and under it, there are ethical questions, for example, related to medicine, ethical questions related to pediatric. The psychiatry, they divide it under the medicine. Uh, the orthopedic, they, they consider it as a surgical specialty, so they put the questions under the surgery, okay? So mostly it is all the clinical content, but this is a general scheme for the examination. Now, a question might appear that, what is the passing score for that exam? And is it easy to get uh, the passing score? And so the answer for that is that it is uh, the exam 
scored from 200 to 800, and the passing score is 560, which equal to 60%, okay? So, and for passing, depends, but, but mostly, especially for our graduate, they can pass the exam, okay? Now, uh, some will ask among, about the trials and how many trials that they can do. Uh, most of the uh, students in uh, our graduates from SRU University, they opt for the first trial, one trial, unless they are aiming for a program. For example, they want to apply to the Saudi uh, uh, residency program, or they want to apply to the some programs which are present right now in the UAE for both Saudis and non-Saudis. They can apply to the UAE using the SMLE score. So those guys take more than one attempt. But generally, uh, our students, they go for uh, to the first attempt and they score high from the first attempt. Like my colleagues, uh, the star that we brought today, their scores, the 90 plus scores are all from the first attempt, okay? So this is a general introduction about the SMLD and what is it about. Now let us go through how can someone prepare for the SMLD. Okay, uh, first of all, you need, need to set a score goal. What is your goal for that uh, exam? Are you going uh, aiming for 80? Are you aiming for 90s plus? Or you just want to pass a uh, score 70 or uh, 70 plus or 75 and get that, uh, just take it away and get the like, classification. So you need first to determine the, their goal, uh, your goal, and building on that, you need to create a study plan. You will collect the resources, uh, the different courses, the latest MCQs. You will collect them together and you will divide them on the days uh, until your exam days usually the first step uh, they they might tell, uh, some will say that uh, i want to study for one month or two months then i will book my exam but from practices and what i actually saw is that usually students don't actually prepare for exam and for the exam until they book the examination day so whenever they book, like the examination day is after three months, then they will get serious about the preparation. And the whole preparation will be uh, totally different than before booking the exam. So one of the main thing is to book the exam uh, before, uh, before uh, wasting much more time. Then with the preparation, there are usually two phases that everyone will go through. Courses then MCQs. First, the courses will help you, courses for OB-GYN, medicine, surgery, uh, pediatric, uh, or some files also for the different specialties of psychiatry and uh, ethics. So usually, uh, most of the, what most of the people do, and especially those who will score high, is that they review what they have studied from first, uh, fourth and fifth year through the courses, not through the uh, older curriculum, because the courses are specialized, uh, specially oriented for the exam, and it's specialized for that thing, specialized for the topics involved in that exam. Then after covering, for example, one or two courses per specialty, they will go through the MCQs and they will revise. Now, when revising the MCQs, it's very important that uh, that you, whenever you are revising, that you need to revise key concepts. It's not just memorizing uh, an answer and going through it. No, you need to memorize the key concept behind uh, this question. And I will give you an example, in just a few minutes. And also, revision is key. And I think my colleagues will tell you much about that. Revision is always a key. Then you will go through the MCQs phase. You need to solve as many MCQs as possible. Yeah, when uh, as much uh, as much as you can 
solve MCQs, I think uh, it can help you to understand the exam better and also to refresh your knowledge. You will go through wide different area. And for the exact same topic, you might find three, four different MCQs. So you will acquire the knowledge and skills to answer the different tricks that uh, this topic or this question uh, might uh, be coming with. And you need to study backwards from the latest to the earliest. So for example, let's say uh, someone is booking his exam in next August, okay? So the preferable way is that he will go through the latest. If he can go through June, July and June questions, uh, then he can go uh, for May questions, April questions, etc. It's not preferably that he will go to uh, uh, to the question from 2021, then uh, forward. No, it's backward, the latest, then the earliest. And in the last two weeks, you will have a crescendo, you will revise the materials, and also you revise the, the questions that is happening in that exact weeks. So let's take an example on how an MCQ should be solved and how it should be studied. So you will know the question concept, then you will know what is the answer. You will check the uh, references for that, either up to date or you will go for AMBOS or other uh, accredited references, not usually not textbooks. Then after knowing the answer, you will ascertain the answer and make sure of it. Then you will go uh, check the uh, will and uh, check the other answer and how they can be right and wrong and what are the distractors in the question. So this is an example from a course that I think we made two years ago, uh, and it was an SRU. Uh, here, one of the wonderful presenter brought, brought that question. And as you can see, it's a question about asthma, and it's about asking about what is the next step. And there is a different way that the escalation of uh, asthma management should be done. And then he revised the key concept about asthma exacerbation. What are the different stages and for every stage where it should be done? And what are the indications for intubation? So it, it was, there was a quick revision, focused revision about the, the key concept from that question, this question, which is the management of asthma exacerbation. He didn't go for the full topic of asthma, which as you all know, it might uh, have books on it and chapters on it. And you remember uh, maybe the fourth and fifth year, remember that, the presentation, the slide that they got uh, regarding to asthma, it was maybe 100 plus slides. So he didn't go for all of that. No, he was focused. He went uh, through the key concept from that question, which is asthma exacerbation. He revised all the asthma exacerbation. And depending on that, he knew and uh, the, all the students knew when they should choose uh, the admission to ICU when they should choose option B and when should uh, the other options be right. Because this is what is usually done. Sometimes it's just the same concept with changing a little bit, uh, changing a little bit uh, the, from the scenario, the basic situation, his vitals, and the answer will be different. And this is the difference between a, a top student who is a, aiming for high marks and a student who is uh, just passing the exam, want to pass the exam. So this is how, just a general overview on how can someone prepare for the assembly exam. Now going to the exam day, before the exam, like one day before the exam, uh, it's generally advised to relax, plus minus some light review. But generally before the exam day, you need to, because it's a major exam and you are studying for almost all the clinical medicine, all the clinical knowledge that you knew uh, during the fourth and fifth year. So 
you need to relax before the exam to reduce the stress. And as you all know, especially in this exam, you really need to have a good night of sleep. It's not about how much you memorize before you are going to the exam, because you will need every uh, neuron in your brain, every energy you have to recall some uh, facts that you, ha you might have studied a few years ago or a few months ago, and it's too many information. So you really need to give your brain the rest that it deserves so it can serve you well in the exam. Of course, no energy drinks or coffee the day before the exam. On the exam day, uh, no revisions. No. You need your brain to go and work on uh, on the MCQs that, you, uh, that it will see. It will go through 200 plus MCQs. So you, need, you don't need to revise information just before the exam day, unless you have a very specific targeted uh, file or table that you want to revise. And you need to go early because the exam center might you might be not familiar. Uh, you you are you might be not be familiar for it. And it might be a very large center and you might don't have any parking places. So when you go early, uh, take the orientation, put your stuff uh, in the right place, you will be relaxed instead of going late, maybe missing on the exam and uh, being stressed because of the energy that uh, you are late and trying to catch the exam. So it's better to save the energy for the exam. Uh, you can use the red flags uh, during the exam and uh, it's very recommended to use them. You will have maybe a hundred question uh, for in two hours. One of the advices is that you can use it if you, there is a question that you know you need to think deeply about and it might take from your time, you can mark it with a red flag and go beyond to the next question. And instead of wasting time on that question, because the one of the main area I've seen my colleagues uh like it uh, it was affecting them it wasn't about the knowledge of the exam it was about the time so please you use your time effectively mark the red uh, flags whenever uh, you see a question which might take more of your time so you can focus on the other questions and get more school and to use and spend the whole four hours duration after the exam day, be proud that you finished one of the most important exam in your medical career. And the results uh, usually will be out at the end of the month. Like after the end of the duration that we have shown, uh, four or five days afterwards, you will have the, your results. So this is the tools and ways that someone can work and do hard to get prepared for the exam and it's not depending on your gpa and how well you were you performed in in during your school uh, school days during your university days مو شرط جايب gpa عالي وامورك تمام انك تجيب الدرجه العاليه ومو شرط العكس if you are uh, unfortunate with the block uh, with the rotations and getting uh, not very much uh, high grades that you are aiming to, that you cannot get a high grade in the exam. No, it depends on your effort for that exam. And as much effort you pay for that exam, you will get the results. We have seen both. We have seen those. I've literally, literally saw those who have failed some rotations and they got one of the highest marks in their batch. And I've seen those who used to get the A pluses and first honor class and barely passing the exam. So it it really needs your concentration, your focus, and your effort for that exam. So Thank mm -hmm. you.
this is actually the rule for our uh, medical path. مثل ما تشوفوا احيانا الواحد يحاول 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 لكن للاسف ما يوفق ببلوك معين او بكريستر معين او كوتيشن ويحبط بعد الاختبار وانه حاول قدم بس نحن محاسبين على السعي ولسنا محاسبين على النتائج فنفس الشيء في الاس ام اللي حيكون مرحله جديده قد ما كان الواحد اللي صار معاه خلال سنوات رابعه خامسه ثالثه اللي صار صار وقت الاس ام اللي هي بدايه جديده ومحاوله جديده حاول تقدم اللي عندك وتبذل جهدك سواء حصلت على الدرجة العالية الخرافية فهو خير إن شاء الله سواء ما وفقت إنك تأخذ الدرجة مع إنك بذلت الجهد فهو كمان خير لك فأنت مسؤول عن السعي ولست ولست مسؤولا عن النتائج طيب هذا كان الوقت اللي عندي الحين I'm very excited for the most amazing part in this seminar which is the part that I'm actually, well, I actually was waiting for uh, mostly, uh, the 80% plus experiences, the experiences of the, these three amazing people who will be talking right now, uh, Dr. Abdullah, Dr. Ghalia, and Dr. Ziad, they, will, they were happy to share uh, their experience. And also, although, We know that their time is busy with the internship. They might be applying for some residency and jobs right now, but they took the effort to prepare and uh, come here today to share their experiences with their colleagues so that they can benefit and they can get better. So I'm very thankful for uh, having them here and uh, I will give them the stage soon. So we will start with the experiences section so first of all dr abdullah ismail please uh, the stage is yours assalamu alaikum as-salat wa adah naam as-salat wa adah tafadhal okay assalamu alaikum i'm abdullah ismail طبعاً thank you Dr. Sherbot for this amazing uh, introduction and orientation regarding SMD And now I am going to talk about my journey during uh, studying for the SMLE exam. Uh, my exam was on 21st of uh, November and uh, I started uh, studying like a month and a half prior to the exam. It was like on 10th of October. It was a short period, but it was focused. يعني. Uh, Uh, I started my studying by making a clear plan with uh, specific deadlines for the basic courses, like for example, the medicine course, I put uh, 10 days to finish it, uh, or three days like this, uh, and then I started studying. Uh, I started studying the medicine course, but I found that I took يعني I overdue my deadline which was 10 days it took me like around two weeks to finish the medicine course so instead of studying one course every time uh, I decided to change my schedule into studying uh, into dividing the day like for example four hours for uh, uh, the ob course and four hours for the pediatric course And then the rest of the day, I was uh, solving questions and MCQs until uh, the end of the day. Uh, it was very helpful for me, this approach, because I finished like uh, the pediatric and ob in seven days. And then I started uh, studying uh, surgery and ethics. And uh, I finished with uh, uh, psychiatry. It was like short course. I finished it within one day. Uh, yes, uh, and the important thing was that I put like the two weeks before my exam. Uh, it was a free week uh, to review what I have already studied. Uh, I said to myself that uh, once I reach these two weeks, whatever I finish, I will not study anything extra. 
I will just take my time to review what I have already uh, studied. Uh, yes, and then uh, during this review period of the two weeks, uh, I marked or highlighted the questions that were difficult or easy to forget and the tables that are easy to forget and I put them in one file, I gathered them in one file and during the three days prior to my exam, I reviewed all of these questions and approaches and uh, I went to the exam. Uh, yes. Uh, an important thing here to mention is that reviewing, as Dr. Sharbat said, is that the reviewing is the key to for the success in the exam. I personally saw interns with me that are studying for more than three months, solving questions for almost six, seven months, but at the end, they don't get what their expected marks or their target marks because they don't review what they are studying. So reviewing is the key because if you don't review, you will find questions or informations in the exam that are familiar to you, but you cannot recall them because you are confusing them with another questions or other facts. So reviewing is the key. Uh, regarding the question solving or question uh, correcting the questions, I used uh, for medicine, uh, it was... Uh, mainly up to date sometimes i opened davidson uh, for surgery it was mainly schwartz uh, and bailey if i didn't find the information in schwartz uh, obigaini it was mainly uh, from up to date uh, sometimes i open williams but mainly from up to date for the pediatric it was from uh, essential nelson book uh, sometimes you will not find topics in essential, so you have to open a uh, Nelson textbook and you can find the information there clearly. Yani. Yes, yeah, so that's it. Uh, regarding my top three advices for you guys. Yes. As I said, the first study, the first advice is don't study what you will not be able to review yani examine yourself see yourself your capabilities if you can review a file study it if you don't find yourself able to review it at the end please don't open the file from the first place from the from the first time because it will confuse you at the end uh, the second advice make the questions of your exam month a priority for example uh, if your exam is in november if there are questions that are updated daily, try to solve these questions. Uh, make your effort into finding the correct information, into studying the approaches of these questions uh, before studying anything else. Because the exams, the questions of your month are the top priority for you. Uh, the third advice are for those who are going to take their exams during uh, internship. Try to take light rotations with less overload during the month of your exam because this will help you more in the time management and to study to having more hours to study for the exam. Yes, and thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Abdullah, for the amazing experience and high quality pointed advices. You covered uh, everything, mashallah. Uh, and yes. as a reminder for you guys, if you want to ask Dr. Abdullah or ask me or ask any of the presenters today regarding anything in this presentation, uh, you can write your questions from now in the Q&A answer, uh, the Q&A section, and in the end, inshallah, we will answer them. So moving on from the amazing Dr. Abdullah Ismail to another amazing uh, doctor, who is Dr. Ghalia. I think you saw Dr. Ghalia name everywhere in our university. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. Uh, she deserved what she, uh, she received, and we are all eager to listen to her experience. So please, Dr. Ghalia, the stage is yours. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, Dr. Muhammad, for your amazing, great words. I appreciate this. And also, I would like to um, 
say that um, we are all agree on the information and advices he provide and we emphasize on them. Uh, so first of all, I will be talking about my experience regarding the SMG exam and also my preparation as well. Um, but just um, before I start, uh, I just want to say that uh, please put in your mind that the great is Tawfiq uh, Nallah Azza wa uh, don't be overwhelmed and stressed. It's an easy exam. Just do your best and study hard, study well, and tawakkal ala Allah in every step you are taking. Inshallah, you will get uh, the mark that you wish. So, um, uh, first, I will be talking about my journal, how I started and when. Uh, I started my internship in July, and in this month, I started to ask about... Um, assembly exam like uh, what is it uh, what are the resources that I can study I can uh, study from them uh, what are the rotations uh, the materials uh, from where I can get uh, a questions uh, what is the question banks available how can I create an account register and um, specify when my exam will be so I decided to book um, my exam in 22 of November so I have a duration of uh, three and a half months to prepare for this exam. Uh, I put a plan for studying uh, and as, uh, as well, I put a plan for uh, the rotation that I will take during my internship. Uh, so I put uh, the rotation that I am least interested in so I can make my focus more on the uh, studying part. Um, so I, ju I just started to ask about the courses available. So what I mean by courses, like there is um, some files that meant to ease your studying uh, just by collecting the most important and common uh, topics and information for each majority, for example, pediatric, gynecology, uh, whatever, um, internal medicine, ethics, psychiatry. Uh, so you can get advantage from your time and also uh, study smart. So for the courses, uh, I started to uh, take a look on the these files meant for pediatrics. Uh, I finished pediatrics, then I moved to the OPS and gynae. Uh, after this, I studied um, for internal medicine. Uh, I found like some courses uh, online, uh, some explanations, some um, channels that may help you to review your knowledge like in a short time and like in uh, a summary form. Um, after this, I finished with surgery. I kept the psychiatry and the ethics part to the month before, uh, to the month of my exam. So uh, this information, it will be like easily forgettable. So you can review it just shortly before your exam. So once I finished these courses and I reviewed the main common topics, diseases, and uh, information regarding each majority, I started to practice solving uh, uh, MCQs from the question the, the questions bank uh, according to the month. So um, I started by uh, August, September, October questions, and with um, with each question I uh, I encounter, I, uh, I I'm solving the question or correcting the question. In the same time, I am studying the topic behind this question. For example, if I get a question about um, uh, the organism causing pneumonia, for example, the most common organism causing pneumonia. So um, I am going back to the different resources, uh, like Ambus up to date. This is the most two res resources I use uh, to study the whole topic of pneumonia. For example, the causes, uh, the, uh, the, um, uh, the organism causes of pneumonia among different age group, the diagnosis, uh, criteria, prognosis, treatment, management, etc. Um, so you are not studying the question itself, you are studying the topic. This is very, very helpful. Uh, finally, uh, in my exam, in my exam month, uh, I just um, focused on solving a question from this month exactly and reviewing um, like the, the information and courses I studied before in addition to the ethics and uh, the psychiatry that I also I already uh, 
book them to study in this month. Uh, in the last three days before my exam, um, I reviewed the information that I usually forget because I collected them in one file. For example, I always uh, forget the criteria of diagnosing uh, a specific disease, for example. So I put this criteria in this file because I want to review them before the exam, like vaccination, uh, which vaccine on which month, uh, milestones, like these topics. Um, also, the day before exam, I did a uh, search for the exam program. I mean, like, um, what is the, um, what I can face during my exam? How can I highlight specific words? How can I uh, stick through a word uh, or an answer? I know all these instructions are available in the exam day. And before your exam, you have a specific time to read these instructions. But I wanted to make myself less stressed and also to make my um, focus more on the exam questions, not instructions. Um, so in the exam uh, day, I went early to the exam center so I can also be less stressed and be um, familiar with the places, with the uh, forms, papers, with whatever the procedure there. Um, yes, one more thing that already um, my colleagues, all of them mentioned, uh, be aware of your time. Time management is very important. Um, regarding if you face a question, uh, just uh, you don't know or you are not sure of uh, his answer, of its answer, just make a flag and go back to this question. Because this time that you are waiting on this question specifically, you can solve maybe four or five questions at this time. Uh, yes, and uh, this is uh, my story uh and experience during SMD exam if you have any question just let me know in the question and answer uh, section and i have like the top three advices uh depend on yourself while solving the question and correcting the question uh in the question banks there are many people trying to solve the question but do not never ever depend on their solution do not memorize the solution just go search and make sure that yeah, the answer you solved is correct and you convinced with this uh, answer. Uh, secondly, study the information, not just memorize. Uh, study the whole topic, uh, not just the question. Go back and study the concept behind the question. Actually, in my exam, uh, there was not much repeated question or even repeated concept. But because I am, I was trying to uh, study the topics, the whole topic. I was able to answer all these these questions. Um, the last advice in the exam: read the question word by word. Sometimes you face on a question. Okay, this is a repeated question, so you um, go directly and choose the answer. Don't ever do that because they sometimes change a word. For example, this test was negative and now they are, they are uh, making it positive. So the whole management will change. So even if you know this question and it passes through your um, studying, so um, read the questions uh, word by word. Last and my golden advice is always review, review and review. If you go through the information once, you will for sure forget this information. So you have always to review your um, uh, the, the information, the courses you are studying or you studied before. Uh, and yes, this um, ends my speak. If you have anything, just do not hesitate to write the question for me. Thank you, Dr. Galia, Thank for you. the Thank you, rich experience and for the golden advice that you shared. Always review and review and review. Next, last but not least, we have one of the students who I think have left his mark in our university. Maybe the early years, uh, students in the early years, first and second, will not know him, but he definitely left a file there or summarized the thing. This guy have always Mm -hmm. held uh, his badge, the different batches throughout his journey. And he was uh, very excited today also to help by sharing his experience and being here. So uh, please welcome Dr. Ziyad Tariq.
to share his experience with us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Ziyad Tara, and uh, first of all, thank you very much, Dr. Muhammad Sharbat, for the kind words. And uh, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank you for inviting me to speak here today. It's always an honor and a privilege to uh, help others, of course. So thank you very much. Um, as spoken by my colleagues, Dr. Muhammad, Dr. Abdullah, and Dr. Aghalia, uh, they, mashallah, have covered every single detail, and uh, they have given golden advices. Uh, but I'm going to uh, add some to that, some general advices and some ideas that might help you, inshallah, in your uh, journey with the exam. Uh, so yes, if we are going to start from the beginning, um, I think that do not take more than three, three and a half months, because uh, if you take longer than this uh, in your preparation, probably you are going to miss or forget the information that you revised, revised at the beginning of your journey. So as I told you, three months is uh, an optimal uh, duration. Uh, if you take this uh, or um, consume the same period, I think you are going to need only about three to four hours uh, per day. Of course, it, uh, it is individual. It depends on each person and uh, how he studies. But I think three to four hour sessions uh, per day is going to be uh, enough, inshallah. Um, now, uh, as stated earlier, uh, you have courses and you have questions to solve. Uh, these, uh, these two go parallel together. Uh, so you don't start by one and uh, uh, postpone the other until you finish the first. No, they go parallel. And uh, if you're going to talk about the courses, there are many courses. All the courses are more or less the same, discussing the same uh, blueprints and same topics. So as Dr. Abdullah said, uh, try not to, uh, if you're going to study more than one course uh, or more, more than one course in the same major together, uh, try to divide your days by topics. So, for example, today I'm going to study this and this and this topic. So, study them from the same, uh, from the different courses at the same day, so that you, because if you uh, finish one course and then start with another course in the same major, you're going to confuse yourself at the end. Uh, now, regarding the question solving, again, as they uh, stated uh, clearly, that uh, never memorize the question. Always solve for yourself. Always know the subject of the question so it is if it is a treatment of some disease of some condition review the treatment of this the whole treatment or the overall treatment of this condition uh, if it is about a diagnosis know the differential diagnosis and uh, etc uh, for the resources of validation of uh, the questions that you are going to review uh, again you will have to always go to some resource that is up to date, always updated, whether it is up to date, but usually it is up to date, up to date is an excellent resource, but sometimes you can go to some newly published guidelines or uh, whatever. Sometimes if you need to refresh some concepts about pathophysiology, about etiology, whatever, you can go sometimes to uh, textbooks. Um, so um, again, Again, revision is key. This is very important. This might have been the biggest mistake that I've done uh, that, had, uh, that I did not review. And on the exam, uh, on the exam day when I was solving, uh, questions came to me that were about ideas that I studied but never reviewed again. And uh, of course, I regret it. Uh, so this is one of the biggest mistake, uh, the biggest mistakes that uh, I have made. And we have to learn from our mistakes. Uh, and uh, you have to put in mind that, yes, the SMLE question uh, or questions are not easy, but I think that our doctors uh, in all majors have prepared us uh, in a good way. Uh, their questions have been harder than the SMLE questions in these majors, and I think that they have done a good job preparing us for the outside world, whether it is SMLE, USMLE, or PLEB examination. Uh, and last thing I'd, I'd like to say is something called the solving strategies. So when you have a question, as Dr. Ghalia said, always read the whole question, but always have a solving strategy. These questions are MCQs, so you'll have to have uh, a specific strategy when you uh, solve the questions. For example, the one that I used, and there are many solving strategies for MCQs. You can find even resources on the internet for this. So for example, reading the last uh, bit of the question, knowing uh, what what the question wants, like for example, diagnosis, treatment, whatever, 
and then reading the question from the beginning to know what you're looking for in the information that you need. Uh, and don't worry, it is a very easy uh, exam if you prepare for it and give it what it needs. Uh, so uh, lastly, I'd like uh, to give you my top three advices, a summary of uh, what I've been saying. Uh, right. So start early to avoid stress. As I told you, the earlier you, you, you start, the less amount of hours you are going to put each day and the, the less stress uh, or the less stressed you are going to be. Uh, the second is about to uh, solve more questions. Always try to solve more questions to cover more knowledge and review. Solve more questions, cover more knowledge and review. And you realize that different questions cover the same area uh, of topic. And uh, the last uh, last thing, again, again, time management during the exam is critical. And in order for you to manage your time effectively during the exam is to have a good solving strategy. Sometimes you will solve 50 out of the 100 questions in the first section, for example, and find that you have only like 10, 20 minutes left and you have 50 questions to solve. So always have a solving strategy. And uh, this comes with practice. Uh, and uh, yes, and, uh, I, I know that we are always here for you. If you want questions, you can always go to any one of us and ask, uh, ask us questions on WhatsApp, on email, whatever. We are always happy and eager to help, inshallah.